Secret number 13. Move ahead through positive. Communications. One of the most common phrases I hear in my counseling work is, we just don't communicate. Because most people identify communication with the written and oral word, they often feel that they are not communicating. But this is not the case at all. We are always communicating. People communicate through body language, facial expressions, gestures, mannerisms, and even silence. Our ability to communicate shows just as much in what we don't say as in what we do say. In the Western culture, we do little to develop nonverbal communication. In some cultures, considerable emphasis is placed on nonverbal communication. The Japanese have a word for this, harage, derived from two other Japanese words, hara meaning stomach and ge. Meaning art, harage is the art of getting inside another person and trying to understand her or him with little use of the spoken word. A person is responsible not only for what he says, but for what the other person understands through gestures, mannerisms, expressions, body, language, etc. If you are having problems communicating with others, the first thing you must understand and accept is that you are responsible for others not understanding you. More than likely, it is the way you come across and the way you non-verbally communicate to other people. All family problems, business communication problems, individual misunderstandings, and even wars are rooted in our inability to understand another's point of view. So let's begin by recognizing the fact that we cannot change others, but we can change our attitudes towards them. Communication is a delivery system for our attitudes. The way we express ourselves is an outward manifestation of what we are thinking. Inside, Longfellow wrote, a single conversation across the table with a wise person is better than a ten-year study of books. One of the greatest problems that threaten any marriage occurs when both partners have not learned how to communicate with each other. Most failures in business are not really business failures, but people failures. People just fail to communicate. Almost every study shows that. Employees view a good manager as one who can communicate with them. Each one of us is a manager. You may be managing a business, family, job, education, or a friendship. To be successful, each of these requires positive communication. Here are some ways in which you can be more effective. Listen. 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 Nothing is more important in communications than listening. There is the old story about two women walking down the street and they ran into a third woman. One of the women engaged herself in conversation with the third woman for a full 10 minutes. The first woman observed, while the second woman did all the talking, and the third woman did all the listening. When they finally parted, the second woman exclaimed to the first, that's one of the most brilliant women I know. But, protested the first, she hardly said a word. I know, said the second, but she listened. That shows she's smart. Developing a listening skill will prove that you, too, are smart. We all feel that anyone who has the good sense to listen to what we have to say must be a good friend. Listening has become a lost art. Notice when you are talking, most people can't wait for a pause so that they can begin talking. They really don't hear you. They are too busy rehearsing what they are going to say next. It has been established in the study of extrasensory perception ESP, that if you send an ESP thought and there is no one to receive it, it simply does not exist. In other words, there has to be both a receiver and sender. The same goes for conversation. 
If someone is talking to you and you are not listening, the conversation does not exist. Listening is by far the most vital characteristic of good communication. But it is also the most ignored. A large portion of our lives was spent in learning to read, write, and talk, but no time is spent in learning the art of listening. Most of us just want to talk, and if people don't listen, we get very upset. Why aren't you listening, or you're not paying the slightest attention, we say. Whether you are aware of this or not, the way you listen has a greater impact on others than the way you talk. The world is crying out for good. Listeners. Nothing threatens another person's self-esteem more than indifference. But good listening extends beyond mere silence. Signs of irritation and boredom, sarcasm, thoughtless interruptions, disagreeing with what a person is saying and not placing any significance on what is. Being said all play their parts in creating gaps in our communication. When you act this way, the other person feels rejected. Inside, he is saying, I have something to say that's important. I need to be heard. And that person will be heard, if not by you, then by someone else. He will do whatever is necessary to make someone listen. The child may throw a tantrum, spill something, or fight with his brothers or sisters. The student may skip class or refuse to study. The marriage partner may use the silent treatment or stay away from home. The employee may gripe or complain. Each one will find a way to be heard. For the most part, people do not communicate. They simply take turns talking. Many wouldn't listen at all if they didn't have to. And herein lies the problem. Few people truly want to listen or improve their listening ability. This was proven to me a short time ago when I offered to teach two courses at a local community college. The first was on public speaking and the second on listening. Actually, I did this to prove a point. Within a few days, the speaking course was completely filled. As a matter of fact, I had to conduct two classes to accommodate the number of people that enrolled. As for the listening course, not one person enrolled. Everyone wanted to talk, but no one wanted to listen. If you think about it, who are the people you hold in highest esteem? They are those who will listen to you. We are attracted to people who want to hear what we have to say. This is why so many psychiatrists and psychologists have busy practices. People want someone to listen to them even if they have to pay $100 or more per hour for the privilege. In order to be a good listener, you must want to be a good listener. Each person with whom you come into contact must be made to feel important. If the head of an organization or some social or political figure whom you hold in high regard wanted to talk to you, you would be all ears. But if a street sweeper, trash collector, housekeeper, or dishwasher wanted a few minutes of your time, would you be as attentive? Probably not. Yet if all these people were to disappear for a week, whom would you miss more? The important authority figures, or the people who make your life more comfortable? The point is that all people are important and you should let them know this by listening to them. By wanting to be a good listener, you will find out how fascinating people are. People you may have taken for granted or considered dull and insignificant suddenly become interesting. Indeed, there are no uninteresting people, only disinterested listeners. We are more interested in ourselves than anyone else. This is a simple fact of human nature. We have feelings, emotions, pride, and anxieties. But so does everyone else. In order to develop positive communications, we have to take an interest in other people. 
It is not necessary to be clever, make smart remarks, tell great stories or prove how intelligent we are. What is necessary is that our approach be sincere. Remember, communication is a two-way situation. Someone has to talk and someone listen. You won't be able to get people to listen unless you first get their attention. And you won't get their attention until you talk about something that interests them. What interests people most? Themselves. They want to discuss what they have done, what they plan to do, where they have been and what has happened to them. Never forget this. A frequent and disastrous mistake in the art of communication is to typecast people and talk to them on that basis. Some people automatically assume that all a woman wants to discuss is home recipes or babies. But this is often far from the truth. Many women would prefer to talk about such diverse subjects as current events, mind, power, automobiles, or vintage wines. Men, too, are assumed to have typical interests. While so-called typical male interests might be the stock market, football, and fishing, many would rather discuss such things as cooking, art, cloths, or self-improvement. It follows then that the Smart thing to do is to try to discover the interests of the person with whom you are conversing. Next to talking about themselves, people like to give their opinions. It's amusing how they will discuss things they know absolutely nothing about. Very few people will admit to not having an opinion. Rather, they will create one right there on the spot. But while this opinion may be way off base, it is important to let them express it. You will never win a friend by disagreeing with someone's opinion. In order of importance, the next thing people like to talk about is other people. They derive real pleasure from this. Sometimes what they say about others has no basis in fact, but again, they are entitled to express themselves. The trick is to point out the good qualities of the person being discussed without taking exception to what is being said. While no minds may be changed, this tactic switches the conversation onto a more pleasant and positive level. The next thing people like to discuss is things they will talk about anything. Here is your chance to be a good listener and learn something. By doing just that, I have benefited greatly. Even though, initially, I may have had little interest in a subject, curiosity got the better of me and I found myself wanting to know more by listening to people who are knowledgeable in certain areas, you can become versed in and able to converse on a surprising number of topics. The last thing people want to talk about is you. They don't want to hear about your sickness, your problems, or your negative views of life. Listen to yourself and note how many times you use the first person. Pronoun. If it is excessive, start switching from I to you. Keep the conversation centered on the other person. Wait until he asks about you. You can be sure that this will only be when he is ready to listen. In other words, after you have given him a chance to first tell you about himself. When you do talk about yourself, it should not be to draw attention to you, but to tie your interest in with those of the person with whom you are conversing. Hold only positive conversations. We learned earlier that words have creative power, the same power as the thoughts that go into shaping our consciousness. As we are always communicating our thoughts, it goes without saying that these should be positive. On those occasions when you don't feel well, avoid the tendency to complain. If you are a habitual complainer, this is your way of getting attention and sympathy. Complain often enough and you will become known as a pain symbol to others. They will begin to avoid you. 
because no one wants to associate with someone who makes them feel ill besides affecting others, you will make yourself sicker by programming your subconscious through constant repetition. A friend of mine used to say, never tell anyone your troubles. Half the people don't care, and the other half are glad you have them. Talk about things that inspire others. Let them know how you enjoy life and watch them respond. A person who sends out positive vibrations attracts people like a magnet. Everyone wants to associate with those who have a happy and positive outlook because their attitude is contagious. Even if you feel down, pretend to feel good. You will uplift other people and, in the process, end up feeling better yourself. Positive conversation also includes learning to keep secrets. You will gain the confidence of people in direct proportion to your ability to be discreet. Before disclosing something about someone else, ask yourself this question, would I be willing to tell this to 50 people? Learn to say only those things you want to have repeated. If you use this approach, you will discover that your comments will automatically include only positive, constructive, optimistic observations. Use plain language. You simply cannot communicate with others unless you learn to use plain language. Something is definitely lacking in your ability to communicate if what you say cannot be understood by a child. Now this may sound ridiculous, but it is true. In my early years as a teacher and public speaker, I discovered that effective communication with my audience was directly related to how simple I could make complicated abstract ideas. The burden of holding someone's attention, whether it be an audience or an individual, falls on you. No one will pay attention to what they do. Not understand. Many college graduates cannot communicate with those on a lower educational level because they have never learned how to make things simple enough. If someone fails to understand you, it does not necessarily follow that they are stupid. More than likely, you have not explained your point clearly or simply enough. Walt Disney used animation as a means of simplification. Frequently great truths are told in parables or allegories. Let's learn a lesson from this and use simple stories, demonstrations, parables, and examples to convey what we mean. One of the best methods of determining understanding is feedback. You get feedback by asking questions like these, have I made myself clear? Do you agree, or what are your feelings about this? This Preliminary interchange helps develop two-way communication. Let the other person know they are impressing you. I have already said that everyone likes to feel important. Let people know they are important by making them feel that you are impressed with what they have to say. This is done by giving your full attention to them. The less you talk about yourself, the more the other person will feel that he is important. Act as if their jobs or social lives are the most fascinating things you have heard about. I was traveling by plane on my way home from a speech I had just given to 5,000 people. I was bubbling over with excitement after an extremely successful speaking engagement. Next to me sat a man who said he was an accountant. Well, I thought, that's a comfortable profession, but how boring it must be. Of course, I didn't let him know how I felt. Instead, I listened as he talked about his travels and the complicated financial dealings of the large corporations he represented. All the way across the country, he kept me enthralled. From this experience, a great truth emerged. Although, on the surface others may appear dull, what they have to say is often more interesting and important than what we have to say ourselves. Most people really do not communicate effectively because they are 
trying to impress rather than express. They engage in a sort of self-neutralizing, verbal bombardment of each other. They use words others do not understand and frequently attempt to speak down rather than to the person with whom they are talking. They are busy showing that person how smart they are. Justified or not, others will form their opinions of you by the way you talk to them. If you show off or try to impress them with your intelligence, you can be sure that they will tune you out right away. On the other hand, if you do not talk down to them and keep their interests and emotions in mind, they will consider you clever, interesting, and even a brilliant conversationalist. Studies have shown that 75% of the words you use are never heard by other people. People hear only what they want, and, as you already know, the thing they most want to hear about is themselves. If you talk to them about their goals, interests, ideas, experiences, or aspirations, you will immediately get their attention and continue to hold it without difficulty. Give sincere recognition. Whenever you give sincere recognition, you are, in essence, showing people how to like themselves more. If you remark about one of their attributes that escapes most people, you will increase your impact. It takes little imagination to compliment someone on his appearance. Although that's nice too, so the creative person looks for less obvious qualities. For example, you might notice someone's sense of humor or ability to attract friends. By taking time to remark on attributes, which are far too often overlooked by others, you are saying in effect, I really notice you as a person, thereby giving that person a reason to like this or herself more. By helping others build their self-esteem and making them feel comfortable and secure, they become more relaxed and friendlier. This all goes back to what we said earlier, in order to think well of others, you must first think well of yourself. Knowing what pleases you and increases your self-confidence provides some excellent clues as to how you can make others feel self-confident. Someone observed, quite astutely, that when we look at our world and see God and good in everything and everyone, our world looks back at us with the same attitude. Wait until the conversation gets around to you. After others have talked about themselves, a point will be reached when the conversation will get around to you. A little patience here as well invested. Don't be like the actress I met at a Hollywood party who came up to me, talked on and on about her movie career and finally said, enough about me. How did you like my last picture? Actions speak louder than words. What you are speak so loudly. I cannot hear what you are saying. Ralph Waldo Emerson. People will judge you by your actions. Small acts of courtesy are not just merely empty gestures, they are thoughtful expressions, which say, without verbalization, I think you are important. Unfortunately, to many, courtesy is becoming a lost art. Don't let this happen. Be one of those who still places importance on small acts of kindness that make others feel special. It is important to realize that people are not interested in hearing us expound on our particular philosophy of life. They are more interested in seeing how our beliefs and philosophy are actually working in our life. Your actions are reflections of your thinking. If others see that you are healthy, happy, prosperous, and enthusiastic, they will ask what you are doing to make these things happen. There is no need to preach. Because, as the saying goes, more truth is caught than taught. Religious fanatics may talk about peace, love, salvation, and their great happiness in religion, but all one has to do is look at their lifestyles to know just how well it's working. The Bible puts it this way, by their fruits, ye shall know them. If your life is a showcase of positive living, people will want to know how they can get on the bandwagon. 
be on time for appointments. Another essential aspect in the development of good personal relationships is reliability. Being on time for appointments is more important than you realize. Lateness does not merely mean that you are irresponsible, it means that you really do not care about the person you are meeting. You are, in effect, saying that that person is not important enough for you to be on time. If you had a meeting with a president or prime minister of a large country at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, would you be on time? Of course you would. You would make a point of it. So, let's be honest. We can all be on time if we are motivated. We violate the on-time rule because we do not realize the consequences of our actions. That's the way I am, we say defiantly. But that's not the way we are. It's the way we have chosen to be. Remember, then, no matter who you are meeting, executive, housewife, factory worker, secretary, salesperson, relative, or if you are attending a meeting or social gathering, be on time. Extend this habit to all personal relationships. Get the reputation of always being there first. If you must keep someone waiting, contact that person and explain the delay and inform him when you expect to arrive. He will admire and respect you for caring. There is nothing more upsetting and frustrating as waiting for someone who doesn't show up on time. Remember people's names. Most of us will agree that one of the sweetest sounds is the sound of our own names. People's names are their badges of individuality, so if we remember them, we automatically win their friendship. Noting and remembering a name takes only a few minutes, but the investment of time and attention can bring rich rewards. The principal reason why we don't remember names is that, when we are introduced, we don't really listen to what the other person is saying. If we recall the moment of meeting, the introduction probably sounded something like this, Hello. My name is MRKXGRTMP. We didn't hear the name correctly because we weren't paying attention. More than likely, our minds were on what we were going to say next. To remember a name, first be sure to hear it properly. Then make an interest-stimulating mental impression of the total person, at the same time repeating his or her name over and over in your mind. If you remember the whole person, you will remember their name. One thing you must not do is say to yourself or others, I have trouble remembering names. By doing so, you give your subconscious a command which it faithfully follows. Every time you try to remember a Name, the impression is rejected because you have already stated that. You cannot remember names. Refute the command now and start. Affirming that you can remember the names of everyone you meet and recall them at will. Remembering names should be one of the priorities on your list of self-development. Not only will this make others feel important, it will make you more poised and self-confident. How to meet people and get to know them. Don't be afraid to make the first move. Contrary to what you may believe, most people hate social gatherings. They like the idea, but dislike the prospect of meeting and mingling with strangers. If we are honest, there is not one of us who, at one time or another hasn't felt uncomfortable at a party. The truth is that, subconsciously, we are afraid that others won't like us, and we don't want to feel rejected. It's the old need for approval springing up. If the thought of attending a social function makes you feel at the very least uneasy, remember this, you are not alone. Many feel the same way. When you accept this as the truth, you will have a lot less trouble meeting other people. Suppose you are at a party and don't know many people. When you Look around, everyone seems to be having a good time while you are just standing there wishing you were at home. 
but you aren't at home. And there is nothing you can do about it for the moment, so you might as well make the most of the situation. The best thing to do is to make the first move. Select someone who is not involved in conversation and appears to be alone and walk right up to him or her. Assume that he or she is friendly and act as if you expect to be both welcomed and liked. With only rare exceptions, the person will react warmly and cooperate in getting the conversation going. Having taken the initiative and broken down the barriers of shyness and timidity, you will soon find your new friend that is easy to talk to. Be friendly and let the conversation take its own course. Use the guidelines for communication set forth in this chapter. And don't try to hard. From the beginning, take for granted that that person will like you. And he will. Learn the art of small talk. All conversations do not have to be heavy or philosophical. It is much better to start off a conversation with a stranger with small talk. There is a very good reason for this. When you meet someone for the first time, they are wondering if you will be easy to talk to. The first things you say provide the answer and create the impression that sets the tone of the relationship. If, for example, you initiate a conversation with a question about someone's philosophy of life, they will be caught off guard and back off immediately. But if you start by asking questions about them, they will relax and the conversation will flow naturally. If you observe television talk shows, you will notice that the host invariably starts off with simple, carefully chosen questions intended to let the guest know that the interviewer is interested in him as a person. This dispels anxiety and lets the guest talk about himself. Get the smile habit. A problem in communication is that people don't smile enough. Watch them on the street, at the office, or even at home. How often do they smile? Some turn a smile on and off like a light switch and use it to impress others. But their insincerity is quite obvious. A study conducted at a major university revealed that on an average, men smile at 70% of the women and only 12% of the men with whom they come in contact. This would seem to indicate that they don't care what other men think about them but are concerned about impressing women. Smiling is an important means of communication because it has a positive effect on others. Think how good you feel when someone smiles at you. In its simplest form, it is a way of telling you that everything's going well and that the smiler is happy to see you. Department stores have shown as much as a 20% increase in sales. When employees smiled at customers, people cannot help but warm up to a smiler. If you are not one, you had better get the habit right away. Smile right now. Go ahead. Now do it. Again. It doesn't hurt. As a matter of fact, it makes you feel good. If there's a mirror nearby, smile and see how much better you look. When I say that you should practice smiling in front of a mirror, I am perfectly serious. You may feel silly for a while, but as your frown and downturned mouth disappear and you begin to radiate confidence and Poise, your attitude will change. Every person is beautiful when he or she smiles. You will automatically look and feel better when you smile. A smile is your way of writing your thoughts on your face. It shows that you have self-confidence. If you lack self-confidence or are consumed by unhappiness and doubt, you will have a difficult time smiling. The Natural resistance to exposing your feelings to others will make your smile stiff and forced. To overcome this, get to the root of your problem and change your negative self-image. Whenever you greet people smile. 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 Smile for everyone. You meet. 
Smile for your family, friends, and co-workers. Smile for the people who frown at you. Smile in traffic. Smile on the elevator, in the store, at the bank, on the street. Smile for the janitor, the waitress, the bank teller. Notice that I said smile, for, not at. The reason for this is obvious. When you smile for someone, you are showing sincerity. The other person will sense this and smile back. That is their way of saying. Thanks for noticing me and making me feel important. Learn to want to smile and enjoy the happiness you bring into the lives of those who pass your way. Try smiling today and notice the magic it works. Remember, your smile is one of your greatest assets. Be careful of the company you keep. Everyone whom you associate with affects your life. Make it a point to not only to hold positive conversations, but as much as possible to associate with only positive people. These are the people who will inspire, motivate, and help you to live a more creative life. Negative. People drain your energy with their constant put-downs and complaints about how the world has mistreated them, how their husbands or wives don't understand them, how their bosses don't value them, and how terrible they feel. Whenever possible, release these energy vampires from your life and seek out people who are uplifting and positive.